Plaid, the word that describes the quickest accelerating production car and a direct reference to the 1987 space opera, Spaceballs. A lot has been said about this car. It's the flagship sedan from Tesla, headed up by Elon Musk and it seats five, while also featuring a zero to 60 launch in under two seconds. For reference, that's quicker than any Ferrari, Porsche, Lamborghini, or Bugatti one could buy. And while this car isn't cheap, it's usually a fraction of the cost of those other ones. So why does this car exist? Why does one need to accelerate from zero to 60 in times as low as 1.98 seconds? Well, this car exists to prove that electric cars not only can be better, but are better than any other type of vehicle. Today, we're going to review the Model S Plaid after 24,000 miles and 10 months of ownership, so let's get into it, and a special thanks to Into the AM for sponsoring a portion of this video. As a quick overview of the Model S, this is Tesla's flagship vehicle, first shipped over 10 years ago. In 2021, Tesla finally refreshed the interior after a very long time with a very similar design, and the major changes were black trim all around the body, a noticeably wider back, ventilated seats standard, a horizontal 17-inch screen, and the biggest one, the yoke steering wheel. The yoke is different in the shape of the wheel and that there are no drive stocks. Shifting is handled on screen by swiping and blinkers are handled with touch sensitive buttons on the yoke itself. Tesla also added buttons in the trunk to unlatch the rear seats and of course changed a lot all over the car. The doors are different, there's a new standard wireless charger up front, there's a rear screen for rear passengers to watch videos, there's also a wireless charger in the back, and the entire battery architecture is completely updated. From the outside though, it can be tough to tell this refreshed model apart from previous years, even though it's a pretty big difference. Tesla now sells two configurations for this car, and as is the case with most Teslas, they are largely the same. The long range Model S on the inside now includes wood trim, whereas the Plaid includes carbon fiber trim. That's one way to tell them apart from the inside as shipped today. Outside, the Plaid features a spoiler and Plaid badge. Other than that, there are no real visual differences to tell these specs apart. The differences come with speed, with the Plaid getting that crazy 0 to 60 launch and three motors. I have a 2021 Plaid Model S, so overall, aside from launches, what I talk about today will apply to either Model S. Two main differences to this car since purchasing mine are that Tesla doesn't ship the wood trim on the Plaid anymore, the center screen now tilts left and right if you prefer, and the taillight design was updated just a touch. They also no longer include a charger or key fob by default, so you have to configure a charger for $200 or $400. For the key fob, you would use your phone key like I do, or the included key card, or purchase the key fob separately. This car now has over 24,000 miles on it. A good portion of those miles are from me, driving this car around LA, to work and back, using it for multiple videos, and doing multiple road trips back and forth from LA to San Francisco. But I also rent this car out on Turo from time to time, so it has definitely been through it. It has seen a lot of road and driving scenarios, and it's great to come back 10 months later and see how this refreshed Model S is holding up. Overall, this car is incredible, but there are still plenty of negatives to talk about. For practicality, it's a very useful car. The software on screen is incredibly responsive and better than pretty much any other vehicle. I reviewed the Lucid Air and the software in the Model S blows them out of the water as far as speed and reliability. It's also awesome to get regular updates from Tesla bringing out new features, which is something more companies are doing these days. Since buying this car though, I've seen suspension improvements, seat belt improvements, the updated blind spot camera that pops up when you turn on your blinker and more, all via free software updates. One one more that I just thought of is they added Tidal, so now I can offline download hi-fi music into the Model S, which is fantastic. As for the yoke, I don't have much to say about it other than good things. I've driven this off and on along with a Model 3 for the past 10 months, switching from the Model 3's round wheel to this yoke, and I truly enjoy the yoke. It's actually very comfortable, puts your hands in a very comfortable position, and feels like the perfect control device when truly launching this vehicle. It's also great to have a clear view of the instrument cluster display. It takes a bit of getting used to on full turns and quick three-point turns, but I'm very used to it, so much to the point where I don't even think twice 
twice when driving. The seats are very comfortable, and the inclusion of ventilation really makes you comfortable no matter the climate. I will say though, while these seats are nice, they should be standard on the Model Y and shipped on cars under $100,000. The wireless charger works well, and shifting on screen while odd at first quickly becomes a no-brainer. The five seats are all comfortable, and the glass roof makes the car feel very roomy, even though it's not that tall. The only time it's felt cramped in this car is when I had three full-size adults in the back. The middle seat is a little small for an adult. The screen back there is cool, but it's positioned pretty low, to the point where rear passengers are very much looking down to see it. It also has a pretty large bezel, and has a few other drawbacks. There isn't rear screen gaming, as Tesla originally said there would be, and the audio is global. So if your kid is watching something back there, it's the only audio the car will play in the entire car. This really should have separated Bluetooth audio, and this is something Elon has specifically mentioned that needs improvement, but it isn't there yet. It might be a long time before we see those changes. For usability, this car is surprisingly versatile. The seats fold flat and there is a lot of cargo space. I actually used it to help us out when moving a few weeks ago, and it was shocking how many boxes and various things I could fit in the trunk. When you drive it around though and feel how wide it is, it really makes sense. This is a large car. You might notice it nearly or entirely filling up a parking spot, which does take some getting used to. I will say that there, the 17-inch screen with rear cameras helps out a lot. There is of course the large rear camera, but the two side cameras also contribute to make it very easy to see where you're going. As with any Tesla, autopilot is great. I find it especially useful on long drives where it just takes a little bit of stress off for me. I just have basic autopilot and feel that that is plenty and don't need to upgrade to enhanced autopilot or FSD. The ride quality is really great thanks to the air suspension in this car, although I will say it can feel a bit bouncy. You can dial this into your liking on screen and I prefer the smoothness of this car to the bumpier ride of a Model 3 or Y, but sometimes that bounciness can feel a bit odd in it excessive. The sound system in this car really contributes to the premium feel. For some, this car doesn't feel premium inside, but when you listen to the 22 speaker sound system, you'll find it to be one of, if not the best sound systems you've ever heard. I love listening to music in this car. Right now, I'm in a mountain road, and this is pretty much the best place to drive the Plaid, as long as you have some straight roads, because that's when this thing really shines. You can just accelerate, pull off, and the regen braking takes over. It's just an absolute joy to drive and using the yoke steering wheel, it's really, really fun. For me, my perfect concoction is listening to The Slow Rush by Tame Impala, which I actually have downloaded on Hi-Fi from Tidal, so it sounds incredible in this car with the 22 speaker sound system. Doing that, cruising through some mountain roads with the yoke, I have ventilated seats if it's a hot day, the climate controls are going, it's very quiet in this cabin, it's really, really fun. Before we go any further, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Into the AM. Into the AM is a company committed to making premium, high quality apparel and supporting other creators like me. Right now, I'm wearing one of their elevated everyday graphic tees. This one is called Electric Desert Glow in the Dark, and it's super comfortable. It's buttery soft, breathable, and has a nice relaxed drape to it. It's a tailored fit made with a 60-40 cotton polyester blend. It's pre-shrunk too, so you don't have to worry about it coming out of the wash smaller than the size you bought it at. My favorite aspect of this company though is that they use eco-friendly inks and long-lasting materials. They have all kinds of really cool patterns to choose from as well as basic tees. This particular design is an ode to the freedom of driving an electric vehicle. They teamed up with electric vehicle enthusiast Ben from the Jeebs YouTube channel to bring it to life, and I love that they're supporting all kinds of creators to help them share these awesome designs. Into the AM is currently running a bundle deal so you can get three graphic tees for $60 or three basic tees for $49.95. Then you can get an additional 10% off by clicking my link in the description below. Check it out. Another big benefit for all Teslas is supercharging. Superchargers coupled with the near 400 mile EPA range in this car makes road tripping especially easy and stress free. Now it wouldn't be a plaid review without talking about the speed of this car. The long range Model S still does a very impressive 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds, but the plaid takes it to a quoted 1.99 seconds, making it the quickest production car available today. It's face melting, stomach dropping, and incredibly fun. For the average person, this isn't necessary whatsoever and I'd actually recommend not spending an extra $30,000 for this speed. But if that's your thing, it's very fun to have a roller coaster available at any time. I took about a month off from driving this car and then went out and did a proper launch again. I couldn't believe it. It doesn't make sense and it's just so much fun experiencing this, especially in a fully electric, very quiet car. Here's my genuine reaction to that first launch after a while. So these are all positive
positives for this car. It's a really, really great road trip car, feels great to drive, has lots of very useful features, but there are still some things that don't make sense, as well as issues that I've had that shouldn't be on any car, let alone a luxury car. As far as complaints, Tesla still hasn't enabled rear screen gaming or console grade gaming, as they have promised since this car launched over a year ago. It may arrive with an integration of Steam, which would be better than just a few AAA games, but they still show The Witcher as included with this car. It's nowhere to be found inside the car. The games are the same as any other Tesla, and the updated AMD chip is pretty much there not being used. I mentioned the buttons in the rear trunk being added in this refresh. Those are nice and all, but they only unlatch the seats. In the Model Y, those will unlatch and fold the seats entirely. For the refreshed Model S, I think because of the angle, you press those buttons, but you still have to manually push the seats forward in order for them to fold. It feels like those buttons are pretty pointless, especially since there are buttons on the back of the seats, right where you'd be pushing them forward to fold anyway. With the recent update of the blind spot camera, it's a great feature, but the location is almost comical. It comes up dead center in the bottom of the center screen. The placement just does not make sense to have to look down there when you're trying to turn, and in my experience when navigating around a tight area, it actually also ends up covering up my navigation. I find myself swiping it away in order to see my next navigation step if I'm taking multiple turns back to back. Tesla might be changing this soon, so that's good to see, but so far this has only been seen demoed on the Model 3 and Y. Another complaint of mine is that for autopilot, the steering wheel doesn't have a following distance adjustment like the Model 3 and Y have, but I finally figured this one out. On the Model 3 or Y, when you go into autopilot, you can click left or right on the right scroll wheel, and then that will adjust your following distance. But in here, you can only do it on screen, and I thought maybe they would add it in a software update, but I finally figured out why it's not there. And that's because in those cars, there's a dedicated stock to enable and disengage autopilot. In this car, it's the right scroll wheel and you just press it. So right now, I press it once and now I'm in autopilot and the car is driving for me. To disengage, I will press once again and the whole thing disengages. There are some settings there, but that's basically how it's gonna work to disengage autopilot. It's gonna go entirely out of it when you touch the scroll wheel. So if you're in autopilot and you try to adjust your following distance, it's pretty easy when you're trying to click right to just click it instead and then you disengage autopilot. So I think that that's probably what they're avoiding there and really they just need another button, but they don't have it because they really tried to simplify this. So they put it on screen and in this case, they're just expecting that you don't really need to adjust it that much. You have your average following distance that you always wanna have. Now the horn on the yoke is a touch sensitive button. Nobody knows why Tesla went this direction, but it still makes no sense. According to Elon Musk, since November of 2021, the hardware for a normal horn has shipped on the Model S. But as can happen with Tesla, as far as I can tell, the firmware still has yet to arrive in any cars. So this car actually doesn't have a normal horn as shipped today, even though it could in theory. It's counterintuitive and means that if you need to honk while turning, it's nearly impossible. I think it's important to note this because oftentimes people can buy something with a feature they see as a deal breaker because there are Will be a software update in the future that fixes it. As MKBHD says, never ever buy a tech product based on the promise of future software updates. For this Model S, that means if you're buying this car and 100% counting on a normal horn or AAA gaming, you may want to wait to see if that software truly arrives. Now my next complaint has to do with the air suspension and what it's like raising the suspension on this car in practice. So one of the best features of this car is that you can raise the suspension whenever you choose and Model 3 and Model Y does not have that Model S and X does, but it's really only for temporary things. Like when you're pulling into a deep driveway or something like that, it's not for use as you're driving. And that's one thing that's kind of bugged me is it's not super clear. So right here, if I click suspension and I go to high, I can go into high and it says keep until 35 miles per hour, but I'm at 31 right now. And then it just goes back to medium. But sometimes like in my neighborhood, I actually have a ton of dips in a row and I just want to drive for maybe a quarter mile on my suspension high, and I'm never going to go over 35 miles per hour, but the, the car just keeps going back to medium. Versus other cars like the Rivian R1T, when you raise the suspension in that car, it is raised, and you're going to drive your whole drive at that suspension if you want to. So as another example, you might have noticed that very high doesn't come up, and that's because it only comes up when you're under 15. So again, it's really designed for just a steep driveway, and that one is, again, kind of hard to keep it in. I'm driving right now at 10 miles per hour, and it is staying. Okay, so this one does appear to stay. 
but then once I go above that, yeah, just reset, I wasn't even above 15. So it doesn't last for very long. It's made for very quick things. And really the best way to use this is the raise suspension button right here in the main controls menu. And then you click raise suspension and it says location saved. So it's gonna remember that next time I'm here, it will automatically raise it. My last complaints are fairly small and may or may not apply to you. For me, this car is very large and wide. In small areas, you can really feel how wide it is, and that's why for myself, just getting around town, I actually prefer the Model 3 or Y from Tesla. That's just my preference though, and I absolutely prefer this car on longer drives. Another complaint would be something that applies to any Tesla, curb rash. It's very easy to curb rash these wheels. I've had multiple Turo renters do it, and the only way I prevent it is by being extra careful and using the side cameras every time I park. It's far easier than you would expect. For myself, not having a powered front trunk is a big miss on such an expensive car. I experienced the powered front trunk on the Lucid Air, and it just makes sense on a car that is this nice and has such a big front trunk space. It makes double sense since you have to be so delicate when closing the Model S trunk. I think Tesla should 100% add that. Another complaint would be that if you're truly wanting to utilize the performance of this car, the brakes don't match the speed. So truly taking advantage of the speed will require some upgrades. That's not uncommon, but something that is an interesting decision to ship on the quickest accelerating production car. It's never been a problem for me though, but I'm not out there racing. Those are complaints, and some of those will bother you while others may not, but now let's talk about issues. The main issues I had were actually right away at delivery. The car was delivered with a dented front bumper and loose trim pieces. Some of it was was fixed at the delivery center, while other things like the dented bumper had to be fixed at a service appointment a few weeks later. A couple months ago, I had a new issue pop up, which I actually also had on my Model Y, a problem with the front trunk sensor. The car thought the front trunk was open when it was properly latched, and the byproduct of this was that I couldn't enable autopilot. It also flashed at me regularly until I got it fixed. I had to get that fixed at Tesla service and was luckily able to squeeze into an appointment in Burbank about 45 minutes from me. The other service centers around me had a three week wait. That brings me to my most recent issue, rattles. I've experienced rattles in every single Tesla I've purchased, but this one is probably the most excessive. I started noticing it a few weeks ago. When I drive, the back seats just kind of rattle and creak constantly. Sometimes it's worse than others, but here's a clip of me driving around a neighborhood and how rough my seats actually sound. So that's what my seats sound like in the Model S after 10 months. This is just not acceptable on a $130,000 vehicle, but it unfortunately still is what we have to deal with with Tesla. Also, they can probably fix this at service no problem, but I've yet to get it fixed since waiting for service availability and going to service is something that takes time. I've also actually had mixed results with getting rattles fixed in the past since they're often hard to identify and they likely are focused on bigger vehicle issues. Right now for availability though, I will say it's a bit better than I've seen in the past. With the next appointment available four days from when I'm looking at it, so I'll probably get this fixed soon. Those have been my issues though. Everything has been fixed at Tesla service under warranty, and I've been back to service twice since delivery for those issues. Aside from that, I've had to perform zero maintenance. Those issues shouldn't happen, but I'm very happy to not have had any larger issues on this car. This car is still fantastic, and even with the somewhat dated design, just speaking about the number of years it's been on the road, I still think it looks beautiful. As I've mentioned, long drives in the new Model S are fantastic. I've done multiple road trips with multiple supercharging stops in the Model S, Model 3, and Model Y, and the Model S is by far my favorite. The speed is absolutely crazy, the screen is very responsive, the sound system is amazing, the maps are really nice to use on such a large screen, and I didn't even talk about the app. Preconditioning from the app is my best friend in the summer, and I've ditched keys altogether thanks to the reliability of the phone as key feature. The Model S remains Tesla's flagship vehicle, and it delivers. There are some quirks to it, like some creaky back seats, but in the places it truly matters, it's tough to find a better vehicle. I hope this was helpful for you, and if you're in the SoCal area and interested in trying this car out, I'll leave the link for Turo below where you can try it out for yourself. In the meantime, if you want to see the latest Tesla news, you can check out my video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.